Hi. So in this video, I'm going to read some from my essays on time, uh, consciousness, and uh, the phenomena of flow state. Introduction. Time may be the least understood concept modern physics encounters on a daily basis, but we may possess most of the necessary parts for better understanding already. So this text will attempt to build a new meaning out of established facts by considering the implications of four-dimensional holons in the context of time. Now there are surprising results and theories in fields where time is an unavoidable part of investigations. What generally has been lacking are attempts to construct better models of time and put them into plain language. Given how few scientists in relevant fields write for a popular audience, that reluctance might stem more from the difficulty of building plain language models than any satisfaction with the existing ones. And compounding this lack of interest in relating what happens in the lab to our everyday experience may be the fact that time's behavior is mostly studied in the field of relativity. But some of the most interesting experimental results come from quantum physics, where time is a priori assumed to be universal and absolute, a reference one. And uh, these references will be in the show notes as well. So this text will survey several of the surprising results uh, experiments involving time have produced, and then attempt to formulate an intuitively satisfying theory of time based on these results. So in doing that, it will make both scientific assertions and propose how to interpret them. And although the observations and predictions require detailed explanations, there's some basic assumptions underpinning the model that can be summarized as follows. The first assumption relates to holons. So holons are a concept introduced by Arthur Kustler, reference to, and a holon is any level of organization that can't be usefully understood by understanding its components. It's extremely difficult, for example, to predict the behavior of a cell by modeling each of the molecules comprising the cell, even though we can make useful predictions around the behavior of a cell as a whole. The cell is a holon. It can't be modeled as a group of subcomponents without information being lost in the model. Holons of some kind exist at nearly every scale that humans have looked for them. And entangled particles are probably the most concrete example of holons. Um, entanglement means that we can't treat the entangled particles as discrete without losing some information about their behavior. Um, but while the need for a concept like holons can be proven at the quantum scale, uh, the concept is more often used intuitively at larger ones. Um, anywhere where we use integers, be that for quarks or for galaxies, we are using holons. Um, integers require the concept of holons to be meaningful. So that model is a prerequisite to the ideas that follow. Um, another important assumption that underpins the text is the cubiest interpretation of quantum mechanics. So the cubiest interpretation describes the observation that happens in quantum mechanics as subjective and only being relevant to the observer making the observation, uh, as opposed to, you know, a particle is in superposition, then it gets, gets observed and its state changes from being wave-like to particle-like. Uh, the cubiest interpretation is that what changes is what the observer knows about the particle. Um, so to a third party that's not observing any part of the measurement process, the wave function of a quantum system remains indeterminate until some data from the interne initial interaction reaches that uh, third party, reference 25. So taken together, these concept of holons and the cubiest interpretation of quantum mechanics informs a third interpretation, that everyday macroscopic phenomenon are large-scale systems operating on the same rules as quantum systems, and that the same concepts and intuitions are relevant at both scales. So this isn't necessarily saying anything about behavior yet. Um, if we take an example from Newtonian mechanics, we can analyze a baseball that's thrown across a field and the moon's orbit around the Earth with Newtonian mechanics. But that doesn't mean that we could make any predictions about the moon's effect on the tides by observing the behavior of the baseball. They're at completely different scales, and even though the same rules are 
underpinning both of their behaviors, the uh, actual outcome of those rules being applied is very, very different. And um, similarly, because there are different rates of information transfer in a universe that's described by cubism, it lends a physical validity to the everyday experience of holons because of rates of information transfer inside uh, holons versus between the holons and their environments. So this observation of the rate of information transfer ties into some pretty interesting theories about the nature of observation and experience, such as Tononi, Penrose, and Hameroff's uh, ideas on subjective experience. So we'll return to that in a bit. This text asks the reader, therefore, to consider holons as a serious concept that are important to everyday experience in a physical sense, and also that you stay open to the subjective observations interpretation, the cubism interpretation of quantum mechanics, and to consider that taken together, these interpretations allow an intuitively satisfying understanding of how the laws of quantum mechanics express themselves at a macroscopic scale. Now, those three, um, you can take those or leave them. If you leave them, then the rest of this text will seem pretty nonsense-like to you. But uh, they should be fairly accessible. There's a fourth and quite challenging interpretation that this text also will present, and that is that holons, which we traditionally think of as three-dimensional, also make sense when they're assumed to be four-dimensional. Now, this isn't a wholly novel idea. Uh, Hadley produce, uh, proposed systems of four-dimensional geons as a means of reconciling quantum mechanics and general relativity, for example, and that's in reference 31. Uh, while there is interest in four-dimensional models of quantum mechanics from the physics community as a potential route for reconciling quantum and relativistic models, this investigation doesn't intend to try and sort out these questions at the level of fundamental mathematics. What it is aiming to do instead is to present a conceptually satisfying theory of time, which borrows concepts from quantum mechanics, but is relevant to macroscopic holons like human mental processes. And this theory aims to predict otherwise unexpected uh, observations that we encounter both experiment and everyday life around time itself and adjacent areas such as causality and perception. And uh, tackling these phenomena necessarily raises interesting questions, which this text will explore, but not attempt to put all of them to rest. Um, in fact, one of the goals in writing this is to propose some experiments that could further uh, test the theories that I'm putting forth. Uh, so to begin this exploration, we'll consider two very strange experimental phenomena that will be useful to keep in mind when thinking with time. So uh, the phenomenon that we'll be looking at first are the quantum Zeno effect and the quantum eraser. And uh, although some of the theories and experiments that this text uh, references are controversial, the quantum Zeno effect and the quantum eraser are uh, not just highly strange to our everyday intuitions, but they're also widely accepted in the scientific community. Now. A lot of people um, think of these effects, which are which are only observed in in an objective way, in the at the quantum scale. Um, if you think of quantum mechanics as kind of breaking past a certain scale, so uh, if it's below a certain scale, behavior is quantum, then it uh, gets Newtonian, and then it gets um, relativistic at really large scales. Then uh, the fact that the quantum eraser and the quantum Zeno effect really counter, contradict our everyday intuitions around time can be kind of ignored. But uh, if you assume that the same rules underpin both quantum uh, systems and our everyday experiences, then the uh, quantum eraser and the quantum Zeno effect really give us something to chew on and they give us a very objective set of facts about how systems behave that gives us a lot to think about in our everyday intuitions and that's why we'll be starting our investigation of uh, of time from these two experimental results.